Hello beginner airsofters like me. Um, I did a video on testing out some 0.2 gram BBs and uh, I quickly realized I should probably get like some sort of way to sight in the gun. Well, it's not really necessary to test the spread of uh, BBs, but I think just people are just used to it, I guess. And so I, I bought this thing. It was cheap enough. I think it was like $8 or something. Yeah, I got off AliExpress. It wasn't that much. You can look it up yourself. Uh, laser bore sighter. So this means it's supposed to go into the bore of a firearm and then obviously if the laser is coming out of the, the barrel of a firearm that's really where the BBs or real bullets should be shooting. So this thing can probably be used you know obviously with real guns not just uh, airsoft. I don't know about paintball though that would require much bigger spacing here so let's see what these instructions say. Pleasantly, it's in English, so that's good. Uh, I don't know which way, where to start. Probably here. All right, so this one is for 0.22 to 0.5 uh, handguns. I'm assuming that's inches. Uh, all right, uh, it's one megawatts as far as the power of this thing. Four adapters to suit different bore sizes. All right, and then just the dimensions of the thing so you I guess you slip on these adapters onto this side here and then that side goes into the uh, actual barrel of your firearm just another thing there do not adjust these four front screws they are you know set at the factory when all right so yeah that's affecting the angle of the laser so that's definitely something I don't want to mess with I'm going to trust these guys set this up properly. Alright, so this will tell you what caliber and inches uh, you're going to work with. But uh, I think it's 6.35 millimeters for... Boy, I forget. BBs. I'll just jam it into whatever size is tightest in my barrel. I'll bring the laser bore. Here we go. So three AG-13s or LR-44s as, as I know them. Laser will be on, rotate the switch, a half turn in either direction until you feel a click. Alright, to turn the laser off, rotate another half turn. Alright, aligning your sight, right, you just, right, okay. 50 to 100 yards, then no compensation for the offset of the scope and barrel. Shorter distances, 25 to 50 feet, will need to be compensated for by measuring the approximate distance between the center of your barrel in the center of your scope. Okay. Iron sight firearms. It's not near as critical. Alright, so this is some sort of target. And I'm assuming this has to do with the bore. I, I don't know. Maybe it's literally just the dimension of the rings. But I don't see a real use, reason to use this. Okay. Well, I got some batteries ready. Let's take a look and see what's in here. So this is the actual main housing. And these are those four screws, I guess, that adjust exactly, you know, in theory, the, the laser mechanism is totally in line with, with this thing here, which goes inside your gun. There is a Phillips screwdriver here. And then just foam, nothing else in here. And the bag with the... Uh, the bore sleeves and part of the battery compartment. Alright, so these are the four bore or five bore sleeves, it looks like. I'm assuming, right? This smallest one it does kind of fit on there, maybe not. Let's see. And that also pushes, forces it outwards. Let's go with the biggest one. So, actually that one slides on pretty easily, this largest one. This one, it's definitely splaying out. So, I guess maybe this is meant to compensate for the different sizes of barrels, right? So, it might be a smaller barrel here, but maybe a bigger barrel, you just gotta push it in further because it's a bigger diameter now. So I guess this probably is correct. 
and, it's, and it just is designed to be thin or splayed out like that. You see, so now there's a bunch of screws, and I think this is threaded. Yes, so the end is threaded. So that's meant to keep this plastic thing on, right? Not really, well, I guess it's nice that they gave you all these screws and if you're always changing the, the bores. You have to just leave the screw in here. Although that's really tight, it doesn't wanna, I guess it's literally threading it right now for the first time. Yeah. Okay, so that's a Phillips. So that's why they gave you this screwdriver. So you can just leave these screws in these four, four, four pieces. Although this one, it's not threading it. It's pretty, hell. Oh, I guess it is. All right. Let's uh, deal with this here. Hmm. Doesn't say which way the batteries go in, right? Uh, I don't see anything saying plus or minus on this thing. What about on this side? There's a spring here. That's usually what goes on the plus side, or is it the minus side of the uh, those types of batteries? Well, I guess we're just gonna have to experiment here. So I got three of these batteries here. They're brand new. Because that thing is smaller. I'm gonna assume the negative side goes in first and, and the plus side is just you know showing you here at the bottom so let's try it that way I guess the worst thing is I'll just reverse the batteries so now this I think this metal piece goes into this indentation and the spring is pushing against the batteries I could be wrong though and then also there's a tooth here, so I'm assuming this tooth goes into this outer piece. So I assume it's supposed to go in like this. But I have to get this side in first with the spring. So I'm going to do this. Now I said twist it, right? So let's try to twist this thing. It's clearly not on. So maybe I do have to reverse those batteries. No. All right. So let's let's see if it works the other way, right? So I'll put the negative, I mean the positive side, the flat side, in first this time. All right. Let's try that again. Push in the spring side first. Oh, okay, so that is the way it goes. So, it's, it's in that groove, and I guess to turn it off, yeah, you just twist it 90 degrees, and that tooth basically separates it from that indentation. So, essentially, that metal piece on the battery tube, once it touches this, it creates a contact, so we'll just twist it back. There, and now it's on again, right? So mega one megawatt, you know, it's good enough for me, uh, an airsoft rifle. I'm not sighting in a long range sniping rifle, so I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, let me turn this off so I don't end up blinding myself by accident. I did notice this thing unscrewed. Okay. So I'm not sure why you would wanna, maybe, I guess, remove this laser that's how you do it but I don't want to mess with that because it'll totally ruin the alignment of the laser maybe I'll actually add some low grade low strength thread lock there so it doesn't mess it up all right I'm assuming with a, an airsoft BB it'd probably be the second largest second smallest one but I will put it on the rifle and uh, we shall see Let's, let's at least get this thing started. It's either going to be the smallest or the second smallest, I, I think, for a BB. Yeah, 
I see. So, depending on how tight your barrel is, you want to either back it out or push it in further. Yeah, I'm quite positive a BB is wider than this. Calling a BB is supposed to be six six millimeters, but I think most of them are 5.95 plus or minus 0.1. If I recall the packaging of most uh, airsoft BBs. Okay, so let me figure this out, and uh, we'll go to the uh, good old shooting box. There we are in front with my gun now. So I got the batteries here with the uh, smaller side up or the negative side up. And so I'm going to pop that towards that spring in there. And then uh, you'll see it's already on, but to turn it off, you just got to twist it, right? So it's off and then twist it until you find that tooth again. So that's okay. I found out for an airsoft rifle, you got to use the very smallest piece of plastic and you got to jam it up as far up against this aluminum as possible. And that's why there's so much of this, uh, so much of this nut, or I'm sorry, not a nut. So much of that thread of the bolt sticking out. That's just the way it was. Um, okay, so here's my rifle, my Spectre Arms with a four inch uh, Prometheus. And the uh, bubble level has it as close as I could get it. Uh, it's a little bit off vertically here, there's side to side bubble here, but horizontally it seems fine. Um, so I took off my barrel flash hider and you can just see the stainless steel of the Prometheus now. So we'll just slide this in here, right? And then force it until it hits the cone of this laser body. And so now that should be perfectly centered. The cone is what centers it. Excuse my toy collection back there. Okay, so that's really pressed up again there. Get some safety glasses on take this bubble level off it's gonna fall off so out there nine meters away you can see that red dot is quite large so let me go over there and I'll show it to you up close at this distance all right so the camera is really close and uh, here's a little ruler at this nine meter distance this red dot the majority of it's a little bit over a centimeter like 11 or 12 millimeters or around half of an inch. So I'm just gonna mark, try to mark this very center. Ah, see, when the paper went back, it actually shifted. Because this paper's just hanging. Okay. So let me block that laser with my hand. There we go. So there you can see, it's around that big. Although I did shift it because the paper bent. Hopefully you can see dimensionally, half an inch, 12 millimeters or so. It's not an expensive laser. So without a focusing lens, uh, I guess that's just the way all lasers work. Right? If this is a high powered laser, I'm sure that dot might even be bigger. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know much about lasers. Well, I'll just leave this camera back here. It's close, but not blocking the view, so I don't shoot it. All right, hit focus, and uh, I will put a couple rounds through. Obviously, I have to remove the laser, though. Well, I gotta say, it's pretty much right. A uh, bore laser makes perfect sense. It's in the bore of the gun, so uh, yeah, it works perfectly fine. That was five rounds. Most of them are pretty close. It's a little bit of a flyer. That barrel is only a hundred and like ten millimeters long, and you know BBs are inherently unstable, so that's as good as it's gonna get. So for this laser bore sighter, I think it's definitely worth getting if you're trying to sight in your gun properly. Now that I know. This uh, is where I'm shooting. I'm going to put on some sights, you know, and then adjust the sights to target this thing. So then at 9 meters, I should be hitting things properly. Pretty straightforward, I guess. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you in the next Airsoft-related video. Bye.